So how are reporters in the corporate sector talking about cybersecurity? Um, I think that actually one of the most remarkable things is that they are talking about it because several years ago, no one was talking about this at all. Uh, the media didn't think it was a real story. Companies were very worried uh, about talking about it uh, or they just didn't consider it to be a big issue. Um, and we've seen a huge evolution, in fact, uh, in the last uh, year or so, we now see media almost saturation really, of um, these, these types of uh, issues. And uh, for companies, we're starting to see them uh, incorporating cybersecurity calculations into uh, all aspects of their business planning. And this is a, a pretty major shift. Um, if you want to take, take a look a few years back, uh, in 2008, uh, I remember that, that year well because I had recently joined the Wall Street Journal and I joined from the Baltimore Sun where I had been covering a lot of issues around NSA and thought this cyber thing was kind of cool and I was trying to get my editors interested in this and it was really a year-long campaign. Um, it took about two months to get what I thought was a fairly simple story uh, about the intelligence agencies warning corporate executives uh, not to bring devices to the Beijing Olympics because they might get compromised. Uh, it took two months to get that in the newspaper. Why? Because I needed a real example of a real person who went to China and got their device compromised before we could put it in the newspaper because our editors weren't sure that this was a real thing. And. Uh, so, you know, we kind of, we went through this over, this wasn't a front page story, this wasn't a big deal, this was like, you know, 800 words inside the paper, but it was, you know, it took a lot of, uh, shall we say, education. Um, and, uh, you know, the one, one, uh, one thing that kind of spurred this along was actually at the end of 2008, the Los Angeles Times uh, had a rather groundbreaking story about the infiltration of the classified computer system at Central Command. And that started to show uh, not just uh, editors and, uh, and, and the media, certainly the, the federal government uh, as well, that this was a real issue that they really did need to be grappling with. Um, and as we moved on to um, 2009, uh, this was actually probably a pretty significant year from the perspective of the, the media's focus on this issue because uh, the media really started to look at cybersecurity primarily through the lens of national security. Uh, at the Wall Street Journal, we started looking at issues like uh, German, at, or not German, sorry, Chinese and Russian uh, 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 surveillance of the, um, uh, the, the electronic systems controlling the, uh, the US electrical grid, and um, later on infiltrations into the Pentagon's largest weapon system, the Joint Strike Fighter, uh, and actually one of my personal favorites, the unencrypted drone feeds in Iraq being intercepted by Iranian-backed militants in Iraq. Um, but uh, it wasn't just the journal. The New York Times also did a really extensive uh, coverage of uh, cyber warfare. They did a big, long series on that. And we really started to see a lot of media discussion around these issues, but it was really just through the national security lens. Uh, that changed in 2010 and 2011 when uh, our, our friends with Anonymous started to bring this issue uh, home, particularly in the private sector. Um, they started out taking down um, the, uh, the websites of PayPal and Visa and MasterCard in retaliation for those organizations withdrawing their support from WikiLeaks. And uh, then they moved on to uh, what some might have seen as rather obscure entities. There was a contactor called H.B. Gary Federal, uh, but his, uh, the, the CEO of this company had um, declared publicly that he was going to expose members of Anonymous, and uh, Anonymous uh, decided to retaliate ahead of time and broke into his company systems and stole his emails and displayed them on the internet and uh, creating multiple scandals uh, that ultimately led to uh, his, his resignation. And I think that uh, for at least those in the private sector who were paying attention at the time, um, there, that, that, was, that was something of, of a wake-up call. Um, I think that the 2000 was probably the biggest wake-up call for companies because that was the advent of the destruction of data uh, that we saw with the Saudi Aramco hacks uh, that were, uh, it appears to be, uh, by Iranian hackers. And the destruction of data on 30,000 computers, I think, did start to get the attention. Uh, we already kind of had the attention of the media, but uh, corporate uh, entities started to realize that this wasn't just a national security issue. This was something that they were going to need to pay attention to as well. Um, it looked like actually 2013 was going to be kind of a tipping point 
um, for cybersecurity because we had uh, all kinds of, uh, of, of big stories at the beginning of the year. The New York Times did a huge story uh, about its own infiltration. Uh, I'll say that I was actually uh, at the Wall Street Journal reporting uh, our own hack and uh, it, it, our, our, um, ex uh, our editors finally sort of quietly acknowledged to me after the New York Times story ran that, that the journal had, had its own issue. But in a display of how difficult a time companies sometimes have talking about these issues, uh, they said, okay, go ahead and report the story like you'd report any other story. So the New York Times had this huge thing where all of the, the forensics experts had cooperated and I just had to go and try to have some off the record conversations with editors at the paper and find a way to, to, to kind of pull a story together. I couldn't even get the company to uh, submit even, even the slightest acknowledgement that this might have happened until I think about four o'clock uh, that afternoon. It was sort of a half admission that we had been hacked. Um, but 2013 was also big because the government started talking about it. They started blaming China for cyber hacking events and things like that. Uh, and it was, it was an issue that was really gaining momentum kind of on all fronts. Uh, and then uh, Edward Snowden presented uh, his whole array of documents and that really switched the conversation over to surveillance. Um, but I think that actually what was so surprising about that was uh, most, many people in Washington thought that cyber was going to be kind of off the radar screen for quite some time, but it only took about six months. Um, and I think that that's because uh, it, it, was, it was an issue that was kind of ripe. Uh, with the advent of Target, um, we certainly saw this issue brought home to uh, not just the media, which covered it extensively, but to CEOs. And I think that what caught the CEOs and boards of directors' attention uh, in the, the case of Target was that um, the media started covering this uh, not just as any other hack, but they were really looking at how the company was handling it. And I think that the shift that we've seen in the conversation in the media coverage has gone not just from the, uh, the, the existence of a breach, because we now sort of see that as commonplace, especially after you know 2014, it's Target, it's JP Morgan, it's obviously now Sony, uh, Home Depot, a whole host of others that people have kind of forgotten about. But the media really is now focused on how companies are handling it. Um, and I think that, that actually creates a real opportunity for companies, and uh, perhaps not surprisingly, companies are starting to realize that. Um, they're realizing that you know there's there's actually an upside in being a little bit proactive on an issue that they now consider to be uh, somewhat inevitable. It's not really if, but um, and that actually explains as well uh, some of the reasoning behind why I recently switched positions from the media sector over to uh, the corporate world in, in, in consulting and communications, that I saw that company attitudes were starting to shift and companies really were uh, new ways to try to figure out, okay, you know, we have all this data, how do we use it well, how do we become do good stewards of this kind of data, and sometimes how do we talk about it? Um, and I think that we're really starting to see uh, through sort of the, the confluence of the media and uh, companies becoming a little more sophisticated about both talking about the issue and thinking about the issue, uh, you know, new ways to start to address these things a little more proactively. Thanks.